So in this video, we're going to learn about properties of reflections, kind of how to do reflections and things you need to be looking out for when you're doing them in class. Um, so you can state how to reflect an object over a line, and you can state the properties of a reflection by the time you're done. So reflection, a reflection is flipping an object over a line. So the most common reflection you can think of that's actually a mirror, looking yourself in a mirror, is a reflection. Or anything, you jump over the line in the opposite direction. So notice here, we have R. When I flip R over the line, like so, if I flip R over the line, notice R is backwards. So that should give you a hint about what the orientation is. You can also examine that whether or not this is an asymmetry when you flip an object. Does it change shape and size? All right. One th the first property I want to point out is when you're flipping an object, like so, let me get a different color. Notice, if you attach corresponding parts, parts that go together, there's something to be said about the given distance. So if you notice, this distance here and this distance here are the exact same. And then the distance here and the distance here are also the exact same. So when you're doing a reflection, you have to make sure every part's the same distance from the line. This, if I would have R be here, this would no longer be a reflection because R is no longer the same distance away from the line as the other R. All right, and I'm gonna pull up Geometry Sketchpad to show you the second property, and I'm actually gonna show that first one over again. So here I have this quadrilateral, this four-sided figure. Um, and then here is my line I'm going to flip over. So I can take this, and you're gonna be working with Sketchpad um, in class when you work with the coordinate plane. So in here I have my transform menu, and I'm going to reflect it over this line. And then I actually am gonna have it label oh, points, hopefully. I was hoping this would label it with Oh, I know what I need to do. Scratch that. We need this whole figure to get flipped. All right, so if I transform this, and then if I label these points, hopefully, yep, there we go. So Sketchpad knows if I flip the points to label them as prime, saying this is the second object. So notice, if I would measure the distance I want to do from C to C prime. Actually, line to C. So notice that's 2.33. And then the measure from C prime to the line. I don't have a sketch pad, it's very finicky. You have to make sure you have everything clicked right. Notice the distance is the same. If I move the, the line, notice that distance always is the same. And just to prove my point, I'm going to pick A. I'll pick A in the line. And that's A.49. And then A prime in the line should also be the same distance. Right. And again, if I move them, I can even have them intersect each other. They're always the same distance away. All right, so that's again that first property that you always have to be this is measure the exact same distance from each line. So when I have you flip objects in class, you measure the distance from C to the line and then you flip it over. The second thing is the angle that you actually um, do the reflection at. So let's draw a segment from B to B prime. Let's say from D to D prime. We're going to connect all the corresponding points. Now by examination you should be able to see what angle is formed between the line of reflection and here. So notice that point right there. We have the point here, here, and here. 
So I can measure those just to prove. And I'm hoping you've already come up to the conclusion of what angle is right here. So you measure the angle and notice it's 90 degrees. And I can, I'm going to measure a few more. Just measure the angle here. They're all 90. So that tells you when you um, do a reflection, you need to make it sure it's perpendicular to the line of reflection. And notice I can move my line of reflection to change what the reflection looks like. And it stays 90 the entire time. So I'll watch. It kind of moves with me, but they always stay 90. And again, these distance always stay the same, and I could have measured more. All right. So again, the two properties I wanted you to come up with, that you always have to stay the same distance from the line, and then you have to make sure you're 90 degrees. So ways you can use that, um, you can use protractors to help you make sure you have 90 degree angle. All right. So here, again, in this little area, this is 90 degrees to get a proper reflection. All right, so review. You have to be the same distance from the line of reflection. So if you're two centimeters from one side, you need two centimeters the other. And you, whoop, and you need to be perpendicular to the line of reflection. If you do these two things, then your reflection should, should be great. All right, <laughs> you need to do your reflection to get credit for watching this video.